morning, everyone. Hello and welcome. This is Make Our Mornings with Meg, and I am Meg. This is the Love and Stamp Studio, and I'm excited to see you all this morning or whenever you're watching. Um, okay, so today's card is actually a really outstanding design. I've used it a number of times over the many years that I've been making cards. And every time I love it because it's just a really simple way to dress up kind of a regular card and uh, make the most of like little, you know, just unusual fold kinds of things. Uh, but it's super simple. It really could hardly be simpler. We're just going to chop a little bit off the front and decorate it and be good. But I'm going to share an extra tip with you. It is going to be about using the dies in the Adventurous Sky, so this stamp set here, using the dies, um, specifically this cloud die, although you could use one of the other ones, uh, to do a masking trick. And I'm going to show you the difference between doing the masking trip and not trip, trick, doing the masking trick and not doing the masking trip. And I think you guys will be able to see just really how much um, it steps up the card to do this really simple little extra bit. So uh, with that, let us flip our camera down. Hey, Tanya. Oh, hey, Betty. Um, I'm gonna flip our camera down and we are going to get started. So let's pull some um, card stock here. So first of all, for our tag front card, we are going to um, have a uh, let me see if I can get this a little bit better here. Um, we're going to have, whoo, that's not the right direction. There, I think that's a little better. Okay, um, we are going to have uh, the vertical orientation here. So this is a half sheet of cardstock. It barely fits in the camera. Um, it is four and a quarter by 11. And hey, Sue, we're gonna score this. And the reason you always want to score, this is a little bonus tip, um, you always want to score the Stampin' Up! cardstock when you're folding it this direction in half because it um, has to do with the hand of the cardstock. The grain of the fiber is called the hand when you're talking about paper. And the, the grain runs the other direction, so it likes to fold along the grain, not against the grain, which basically means you always want to score here at five and a half inches to go ahead and fold this in half without your cardstock cracking. So if you find sometimes you get cardstock cracking at the top here, um, first of all, you have to have nice cardstock <laughs> to avoid that, like the Stampin' Up! cardstock. But then you also want to make sure you're scoring um, when it's needed. So usually when I fold cards the other direction, I don't bother. But um, I know that I can get away with that with our good cardstock. So, all right, we're going to keep our trim right here because the next thing we're going to do is trim. Hey, Nikki. And we're going to cut away the bottom part of our card here. So um, there's a number of ways you can choose to measure um, basically what I want to do is I want to be able to use a three by four piece of designer series paper to, um, layer here. So I'm going to cut this just, um, a quarter inch larger than my three inches. So from here to here is three and a quarter inches. So I'm going to line this up right here at my three and a quarter mark. I just look kind of where I am and, and keep that in line there. And then I'm going to cut away this extra piece here. Now in a traditional tag front card, you would turn this into the tag front, uh, which you certainly could do. But we're gonna pull in another piece of designer series paper instead, which is just um, that much cuter. So this card is sized really nicely to fit um, designer series paper efficiently. So this piece here is three by four, and this one is two by four. Um, so it gives you um, a really, like if you wanted to make multiples of this card, it'd be really easy to cut them um, all together. So. And of course, um, this card is actually one of the ones that you will um, receive if your order with me is more than $50 this month. So you'll get all the supplies um, pre-cut uh, and so forth to do this and a little label pre-die cut. Um, so you can kind of get excited about that. If your order isn't quite $50, that's totally fine. You're still going to get the PDF for all four um, Take to the Sky projects that I'm sharing this month. So. All right, so let's get this part done. And then, uh, and actually, honestly, both sides of this paper are really fun. Um, this one has the little planes on it, but I'm gonna cover it up because I really like this solid copper background. And if you saw right at the beginning, my, the shirt I'm wearing today is kind of copper colored. I really didn't plan that, but it worked out kind of nicely. So, you know, you gotta dress the cards you're making, right? All right, so here's a tip for cutting this banner here. Um, when I want to cut a little banner tail, I often will cut up in the center, okay? Usually I just eye it. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut from the corner to the top of that cut, 
and from this corner to the top of that cut. And what that does is it makes it pretty easy to get a banner tail that's fairly straight. Um, so you don't have to do that thing where you like cut one and then it's not right, so you cut one and then pretty soon your tag is about that long. <laughs> Raise your hand if you ever. <laughs> um, I think most of us have been there. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and stick this down and I need some Stampin' Dimensionals for that. So I'm gonna put a couple here at the top and then I'm going to add um, one down here. I wanna make sure that I'm not putting it too low because I don't want it to uh, go below the, the bottom of our card. So I'm gonna go ahead and pop that on there and position this here on our card. When you have a plaid like this, it makes it really easy to just make sure you're getting that pretty straight. Okay, so let's talk about, um, we'll come back for, we're, we'll get to the masking, I promise, it's coming. And it makes a big difference. Oh, yay, Betty, <laughs> Betty raised her hand. Yep, those short tags, you know. Could, I could just pretend I intended it to be that short, but I could also just use the trick and make it easy. All right, so on the front of our card here, um, I want to go ahead and have a cloud die. And let's see, do I have the right paper? This is the one I'm stamping on, a cloud die. So we're gonna go ahead and bring in this big cloud here. Any one of them would work, but um, this one is gonna be a double duty cloud and you will see why. It's gonna be part of our stamping and part of our, um, part of our masking, so. All right, I'm gonna pop this on here. Remember to use a little bit of washi tape, then you can stick your stuff down and then carry it to your um, carry it to your surface. And then we're gonna do a label. And for our label on this one, I'm gonna do you're the best, plain and simple, because you guys know me. I cannot resist a corny pun. And uh, you could also raise your hand if you like corny puns. Um, I know I'm not, I hope I'm not alone. I guess I shouldn't say I know it. But I'm going to use Night of Navy to stamp this so that it matches our card background. And I'm going to lay that on there. Grab a little bit of washi tape. Uh, um, there it is. Grab a little bit of washi tape. I usually try and just leave my washi tape out like this at the end so that I don't have a hard time looking for the, the ends. And a lot of times I'll also make sure that my washi tape is mostly on the scrap part of the paper, um, not so much on the, the keep part of the paper, just in case um, it doesn't come off as cleanly as I expect it to, but hopefully it should be good. All right, so we're gonna take this and we're gonna die cut it and look through the magic of television, <laughs> we have a label and a cloud. All right, so our label is gonna go here on the front and this cloud is gonna pop behind it. I really wanted to add a fun accent to this. Oh, hey, happy pre-Friday, Kelly. Yes, I actually know what day of the week it is. It is Thursday today. <laughs> and I'm gonna pull out um, this paper, and somebody actually helpfully left me a comment and said what the pur purpley color is. Um, I think it was on the YouTube version of our video. So um, the last time I talked about it, and I couldn't remember what it is. Gold, copper, and whatever that purpley fun color is. We're gonna use copper again because we have it with a copper clay and they're just so beautiful together. So I've actually got a one inch strip, one by three, and I'm gonna pop this on here as a little accent. And you see how that just really kind of, this is gonna be straight, so we'll pretend it's straight. See how that just really dresses it up? So there's with, with that extra little bit of bling, and there's without, which is also cute. Uh, but I think with it has that extra little dressy effect. So let's bring this down. You could also choose, let's see. You could also choose to cut a banner tail on this. I think I think I might actually. I sh I'll show you the other version that I made of this card. No, actually I think I'm gonna leave this square and I'll tell you why. Because yes, this banner is here, but we have a rectangle here on this label and we have a rectangle here on our background. So I'm gonna keep this rectangle here to match the rectangles that we have there. So we'll let that um, tag there be its own special one of, um, which actually helps it to kind of stand out just a little bit. So I'm gonna run this all the way up to the top. And I'm going to go ahead and put our label on, but we're gonna hold off adding the cloud because it is going to um, be needed here. So it's a double duty cloud. Gotta love that, right? So I'm gonna pop this on. And then our cloud, when we're ready for it, is gonna pop uh, behind there. But we need this cloud for the inside of our card. So, um, oh, and then of course we have our industrial trinkets to get added. Hey, Margie. Um, ah. 
So I'm going to go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, Margie said, I hope your day is going well. Ironically, uh, it's um, I got a little hiccup in it. So um, otherwise, yeah, just, uh, yeah. Anyway, it's got a little hiccup in it. That's what I'm going to say for now. <laughs> but thank you for your wishes. I really appreciate it and can use them today. So uh, I'm going to take this cloud and we are going to do some, um, do some uh, masking here. And I'm going to show you the kind of the right way to do this, the super easy trick that makes a difference. And then I'm going to show you one that I did the wrong way. And then um, you guys can decide whether you think it's worthwhile. But okay, we're going to start off. <laughs> I hope you'll think it's worthwhile. That's that's what I'm, I'm uh, banking on here. But I'm gonna start off by stamping this cute little plane. This is the medium sized plane of the three choices here. And remember this die set has both the um, shape dies uh, here that cut out the accessory images and the dies that cut out the um, stamped images. So um, I could go ahead and stamp this again and I will just for the visual reminder. Um, here is a piece of post-it note. Actually, I think this is two. Let's. Go ahead and make this one. Um, so a piece of post-it note. And when you make a mask, you want the part that you're stamping on to be the part that has the sticky behind it, okay? Um, there's also, Stampin' Up! also carries masking paper for this, which you can also use. Um, I usually just have post-it notes handy, so I tend to use them. All right, and now what I'm gonna do is I am going to go ahead and cut around here. So you can use a die to cut around the outside of this image. Um, but with the dye, you're gonna end up with a little bit bigger bubble around the edge. So depending on your taste, what you like, um, you could choose to do that because it's super quick and easy. Um, or if you want your mask to be a little bit tighter, then you might choose to go ahead and cut it out like this. So it doesn't take super long. Remember when you're fussy cutting to keep your scissors in one place, they do not move. And then um, use your free hand, usually uh, your left hand uh, or your right if you're left-handed. Um, your free hand is going to just turn the paper. And so my scissors really just have a cutting action, not any kind of turning action. So, all right. So there is our post-it note mask and it has a little, um, a little here behind. Ah, oh, thanks, Rosalie. <laughs> um, I, yeah, Sue, Sue said, is the purple called gunmetal? It should be. It's what it looks like. Um, I think, though, it's called something else in the catalog. So um, maybe we'll figure it out here eventually. So I'm going to take this mask, and I am going to layer it right over our stamped image. Okay. Now I'm going to bring in a piece of scrap paper to protect my table. And I am going to use the back of this cloud um, for its multipurpose function. Now I wanna make sure I get one, um, some of these clouds right over our, uh, right over, oops, inky fingers, um, right over our, our plane for the best effect. So a uh, blending brush, if you haven't used these before, they come three to a package, they are super fabulous. Um, you can see I have blue labeled on this one. I tend to keep one for blues, one for reds, one for yellows. Um, you can wash these in a sink. The bristles um, don't hold a ton of ink, which is what you want. You want them to release the ink, not like suck it up like a sponge. And so you can wash these in the sink, just give it you know, 24 hours or so to dry. Um, or when you're done with a color, you can just sort of squish it out and then go on to the next color. If you are changing colors drastically, like red to yellow, sometimes they can get a little bit muddy, which is why I like to kind of dedicate one for each. Um, that being said, I never wash my blending brushes, not ever. Um, I have six big ones, and I feel like that covers all the colors that I need. Red, uh, yellow, purple, green, orange, um, blue, and sort of a... I don't know, darker one, I guess. <laughs> um, so those kind of cover. Uh, so these are a great tool to add to your stamping collection if you don't have them already. So what I'm gonna do is place my cloud on here. I'm just gonna tap gently because my pad is super inky. And then I'm gonna just practice on here. Now, see how dark this um, messy splotch is? Let's see. Let's get you guys zoomed in here so you can really see what is going on. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and um, just tap this a couple times to lighten the ink load. And now I'm going to go ahead, starting on my cloud and working up, I'm just going to brush around the edge. Now, it's not going to take a lot of ink to show up really well. So when I pull this away, can you see how much you can see that cloud under there? 
Now I'm gonna shift this over and maybe I'll grab just a little more ink and same, I'm just gonna do the top edge of the cloud here, okay? So that we have our, our clouds forming. I'm gonna do another one over here and try and grab, I don't think I'm gonna re-ink. Try and grab the top edge of that plane, okay? And I'm gonna move it over one more time and try to get a different little portion of the cloud so that it's not quite all stacked up on top of each other. So this Adventurous Sky stamp set and die bundle is super fabulous because it includes both the planes as well as the backgrounds for the clouds. So really good possibilities there. And then check out the big release. Oh, yay, thank you, Betty. It's tungsten is the name of that color. So that works. That, that's kind of like gunmetal, right? I don't know. Uh, anyway. Um, what I'm going to do now is peel off our mask here and there we have our airplane and it's just really clean and light underneath there. And so here is the difference between the one that I used the mask for and the one that I didn't use the mask for. So do you see how the cloud is, it's okay on this one here. The right one is the one without the mask. It's okay. It's not great. It's, it's not like objectionable necessarily. But I do love the cleanness of the one on the left where we use the mask. It just really helps that image stand on its own so that it um, isn't over, overcome by like the clouds in the, in the space behind it. So, all right. Yay, Lila, I'm glad you like that. So then, um, just to make it easy for next time, I save my masks. I don't recut them every time. I just pop them. You can see I've made this one already. I just pop them here inside our um, stamp case and then I have them ready to go for the next time I am crafting. All right, oh, I started to, uh, I don't need to keep, I need to keep this handy because we still need this. And I started to show you um, these dies here. So if you didn't see the other day, um, the last one I think I showed you last episode, uh, so be 458, was this um, plane here with the little propeller card and this was a um, stair step card. So it stands up like this. And so this one used the die cuts from this set here to cut out that shape die on the airplane. So really fun. And then of course, oh, I didn't tell you the name of this. These are the everyday details dies, which um, <laughs> this month at least are my top extra, um, extra shape dies. I'm really, really loving them. So, all right. So we'll come back to the extra cards here in a minute and I'll show you all three of them that we've done so far, but let's go ahead and put this together. And I'm gonna show you our finishing touch here with our um, trinket and where I would put that. So we have our really nicely masked plane here. Yes, oh, I'm glad you guys like that, Margie. It is a really nice add and really simple. Like, you're, it's just the stuff you're doing already. This would actually make a really outstanding decoration for an envelope. So if you were going to um, need an envelope to go with your card, you know, you could put the airplane and down here in the bottom corner and put some clouds around it. It would be a really cool, um, really cool way to go, so. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fold this up and now we have our cloud and we just use the back side, so I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So <laughs> it's, a, it's a good card element. And pop this right on there. And now we need to add our trinkets here. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull one of these and mini glue dots are my favorite to add for them. And they have that hashed background on them, which makes them accept a glue dot really nicely. So I'm gonna press this down here and put, uh, place this on this corner. Nope, I'm gonna put it on this corner. And the reason um, that I'm doing that is that it is kind of drawing your attention sort of down into the right, which is sort of the natural way that we, at least here uh, in Western world, uh, read things kind of down into the right. And then um, that sort of connects here the vision between the front of our card and the inside of our card. Now, you could turn this stamp set into anything, um, just the saying hi card, flying by to say hi. You could add the birthday greetings. You could add happiest Father's Day. Um, you always lift me up to my friend. Any of those greetings go along with you're the best, plain and simple. So you're the best, plain and simple is, is just fun. And of course, puns are the best, plain and simple. So uh, I this this pun is approved by Meg from Loven Stamps. Um, all right, so this is one of our cards. Let me zoom out here so that I can show you just a little bit more. Um, this is the second uh, card, not in order, but this is the second card from Maker Mornings with Meg tutorials, the monthly, Love and Stamps monthly tutorials for um, the month of May. 
And I'll just set this one up this way. And then our last one, this is actually the first one I demoed, um, was this reverse fold card here. So that gives you a good, um, a good selection. We have one more card coming. And uh -huh, it is also a fun fold, actually. So if you're thinking, like, I would love to have the principal tutorials for all these, they're super easy to get. Um, you can get them by placing an order in my online store of any size. You get the principal tutorials. If you um, place an order uh, that is $50 or more, you're going to get two of the cards and the, the card kits for those in the mail. And this playing card is going to be one of them. Um, then the other... Um, Way you could get those tutorials is if you are a Loven Stamples demonstrator, I send out our monthly tutorials every month with um, those that printable file. So you can get those as a um, one of my demonstrators. And this month is actually one of the best times to go ahead and take advantage of that demonstrator starter kit because it's the normal $99. You pick out $125 of whatever you want in your kit. So it's a really good deal anytime. And then the bonus for May is like, it makes it just phew, even that much better. So it is $82 worth of things that are new colors, the new in colors. It is the five new in color ink pads. It is the assorted in color cardstock. It is the in color new markers and it is the in color assorted designer series paper. So that is about $82 worth of goodies and it brings the total value of your kit over $200 and you're paying 99 for it. Um, it's free shipping, so you just pay the tax. There is no like trick in that. Um, of course, Stampin' Up! like is super excited to have you and they hope that you'll, you know, as a demonstrator, love what you're doing and, you know, have a good time and purchase more stuff and use your discount, your product discount and so forth. But if you don't, if you just get the kit for the value of the starter kit, um, that's perfectly okay too. The Stampin' Please does not knock on your door and take your stamps away or anything like that. So um, if you have any questions about that or concerns, um, or you know, you're know, you like, oh, I, I think I think I wanna do that, Meg, um, you can leave me a comment, you message me, uh, you can click the link. There's a link in the video description for um, information about the starter kit. And you can just go to my website at lovenstamps.com and click through the information there about being a demonstrator. It's a really good deal. It only runs till the end of May. Star. The DSP assortment was on back order for a little while. So if you got your starter kit, I got a message from somebody yesterday who just signed up and was worried like, oh wait, um, I didn't get my I didn't get my DSP in the kit. Um, it's okay. It was back ordered for a little while. So if you ordered your starter kit um, in the in the last week or two, your kit might arrive without the paper, but they will ship it. So don't worry, you're still getting it. All right, I think that covers us for today. Um, oh, thanks, Bonnie. I'm glad you like it. I hope that everyone has a wonderful weekend, that it's filled with all the things that you love. You get a chance to do some stamping, to share some cards that you made. Um, and with all of that, I will sign off and uh, see you Tuesday for another episode of Maker Mars with Meg. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.